All right then, gang, so we've seen one way of outputting a list to the screen using the map method on an array and then returning some JSX for each item in that array and then embedding that inside a scroll view so that we can scroll up and down in that list. And that's absolutely fine, but there is another way to output lists, which a lot of people see as better, and it is better in certain conditions, but we'll talk about the differences and why something's better after I've shown it to you. So first of all, I'm going to just comment out all of this stuff right here. So let me highlight everything and control forward slash and that comments that stuff out. Now above that, we're gonna do the other way to output a list and that is by using what is known as a flat list component. So let me scroll to the top where we import things first of all. I'm gonna get rid of scroll view now because I don't need to use that with a flat list. It automatically comes with the ability to scroll up and down the list. So I'll get rid of that and instead I'll import flat list, oops, if I can spell it that is, flat list from React Native instead. So let's go down here and do this. First of all, we need our flat list components like so, and this is a self-closing component. We don't have an opening and a closing tag. And in here, we have a number of different props which controls how our list works. So the first prop I wanna do is the data prop, and that specifies the data that we want to output. So what data shall we cycle through in order to output that data? Well, it's this stuff right here, people. So all we do is pass in the array that we want to cycle through. So that's the data prop. The next one is the render item prop. And this is gonna be equal to a function. Now this function is what returns some JSX. So I'm doing an arrow function. And instead of opening this up with curly braces, all I'm gonna do is parentheses. And inside these parentheses, we're gonna return some JSX, okay? So in here, we can actually destructure the item. And the item is the individual item in the array that we're iterating. We have to destructure it because it's not just the item we get here, it's another value entirely, but that value contains the item, so we can destructure it like so. So now we have access to each item inside this render item function. So in here, all we need to do now is return some JSX. Now before we returned a view with the key. Now we don't need the key in this instance. Flatlist automatically looks at this data for a key property. So it must have a key property. There is a way around that and I'm gonna show you that in a second. But for now, all you need to know is that we don't need to specifically output the key on any JSX we render here. It's automatically added. So all I need to do is something like this a text widget, which is gonna output each individual item. So I'm gonna have the same style as this thing down here, so it looks the same. And in here, I'm still gonna output item name. So the item refers to whatever item we're iterating, and the name property is this. So now we've done that, I could just save this and cross my fingers and see if this works. And it does work and we can scroll up and down inside it. It's exactly the same. Only, first of all, this is a little bit less code than this. And secondly, it can be better for performance. Now, the way they differ is that when we use a flat list, all of the items, if we have a really large array of items, you know, hundreds, all of the items do not automatically load onto the screen when it first renders only the first few, and then more will load as you scroll down. Now, that is in contrast to this list and scroll view, because when we use this, it renders every item from the beginning. So for larger lists with over say 100 items, it's probably better to use a flat list for performance as well. But for smaller lists, or even just bunching together different components into a scrollable area, scroll view, and the map function is absolutely fine. Generally, I'm gonna stick with flat list for outputting lists of data. Now, I mentioned that the flat list component automatically looks for the key property on each item that it cycles through. 
So each item must have a key property, but what if we didn't have a key property? What if each of these came from a database, like a record in a database, and instead of having a key property, they had an ID property, which a lot of objects do when they come from a database. So let me just replace that. If I save this now, then we're gonna get some kind of warning or error because it expects a key property inside each item. You can see right here, missing keys for items. Now, the way we can get around this, if we have some kind of identifier that is not named key, is by adding another prop to the flat list, and that is called key extractor. So we can say down here, key extractor, and that is equal to a function. So I can open up a function in here, and all we have to do is return what property on the object is gonna be used for the key. So we get access to each item, oops, not in capitals, each item, because again, this is gonna cycle through each item in the array. And each time around, we're gonna say what property on that item is gonna be used as the key. And in our case, it's gonna be the ID. So I can say item.id. And now we're saying to this flat list, look, don't look for a key property, look for an ID property and use that as the key instead. So if I save this, this should work. If I cross my fingers, yep, it works and we no longer get that warning at the bottom, awesome. Now, one more thing I wanna show you and one more benefit of using this flat list is that we can add on another property called num columns and we can set this equal to a number and what that is gonna do is split this up into some kind of grid so we have columns instead of just one on each row. So for example, I could say two in here and it's gonna split this up into two columns of data and we're gonna see that in a second and you can see right here, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now in order for this to look a bit better, I could add in a margin horizontal to each item. So let me do that, margin horizontal, and set that to 10. And I'm also gonna add a margin top, and I'm gonna set that equal to 24. Okay, so now I'm applying a bit of margin between each item left and right, and also top and bottom. So if I save it, now we can see this looks a little bit better. So that's another advantage of using flat list, the fact that we can use this num columns property to split this out into several different columns. So that's the flat list in React Native. We will be using them a fair amount in two different projects later on in the series. But in the next lesson, I wanna move on now and look at touchable components.